So I'm going to shift the gear completely uh, and talk about uh, a very completely unexplored aspect of Madagascar insect biology. My name is Piotr Lukasik. Uh, I'm an associate professor at Jagiellonian University, and I have contributed to the development of molecular methods that you have heard about. But my primary interest is in the diversity, evolution, and functions of insect-associated micro microorganisms. So hope to convince you that this is indeed a very interesting topic. Um, when measuring diversity, well, so far we have looked at some ways of doing this, but we mostly try to get information about who are the species, who are the insects. But a really important aspect, of course, of insect biology is their interactions with other organisms. So all insects, all, all organisms interact a lot with food or, or, or prey. Uh, they are being eaten, attacked by predators, attacked by parasitoids, uh, attacked by parasites. And our understanding of those biotic interactions of insects in Madagascar uh, is very limited. But what we know much, even less, much less about is the microbiome. So microbiome defined as the community of microorganisms that can be found living together in a habitat or on or in insect, insect body. Microorganisms are critical to the biology of most organisms. Uh, they are super important to our biology. So now every year billions of dollars are being spent on the investigation of microbes that are turning out to, have to play very, very important roles in, in our health. Uh, but symbiosis are not less important, and in many cases, much, much more important for insects, uh, including those shown here and many, many others. So uh, insect microbiomes are very diverse. They can affect insects in many important ways. Uh, through those different effects, uh, microorganisms can very strongly influence insect populations and insect communities. And many of those effects are very re relevant, uh, of strong interest to, to humans. And I'm going to elaborate on uh, some of those aspects. So insect microbiomes are very diverse. So there is lots of taxonomic diversity of different microbes that associate with insects. There are bacteria representing many different clades. There are some fungi. They all can occur on or in insect bodies in different combinations. Uh, they form different types of associations with insects. Uh, some microbes may live only in very specialized insect cells, in dedicated organs for holding bacteria. Other insects may be distributed across insect body fluids, just circulate within the body. And then other microbes uh, can form more or less complex communities on the, in, on the animal surface, or inside the digestive tract. Those insects can be transmitted also in very different ways. Some of them are strictly heritable. So mothers pass on the microbes to, to the offspring with like a very high fidelity. Some other microbes might be acquired uh, from environment or from other sources each generation. So that different insects, different generations, different individuals in a single brood may have quite different microbes. Interestingly, some of the heritable microbes can also be transmitted across species, uh, and then they can, they can become heritable. So that way, some of the microbes, sometimes with very important effects, can actually move across insects, conferring those new effects on, on them. And how, how about the effects? So there can be, there can be many. Uh, here are just a few of the strong main points. Many insect-associated microorganisms play very important roles in insect nutrition, uh, being absolutely critical uh, to their ability to feed on certain diets. Mm. This is also associ associated with pest status of some, some of the insects. So we know of several examples uh, when symbiotic microorganisms make insects more efficient as pests or harder to, harder to fight. Uh, 
uh, symbiotic microorganisms can uh, strongly affect insect uh, ability to cope with environmental challenges, so essentially defend them against natural enemies like predators or parasitoids or viruses or fa pathogenic fungi, or, but also abiotic like heat stress or uh, water stress. So defensive symbionts are really important in insect biology. And then another very important effect <coughs> that symbionts may have is on insect reproduction. Uh, so they can affect reproduction in many ways. Uh, won't be getting into details, that, that, but through those effects, uh, symbionts can really strongly affect insect populations. So I'm going to provide some of the examples of like particularly striking insect microbial associations. First example are sub-feeding hemipteran insects, such as this cicada that I, that I photographed in South America. So cicadas feed on plant sap, which is not a very good food source because it lacks essential amino acids and cicadas cannot make those amino acids themselves. And so because of that, they do rely on very specialized bacteria that live in those special organs within the insect body. So those little blobs are completely packed with highly, highly specialized microorganisms. Uh, and those microorganisms produce amino acids and vitamins that are deficient in the, that are lacking in the diet, and which makes microbes absolutely essential to the biology, to the survival, to reproduction of insects such as leafhoppers, plant hoppers, or, or cicadas. In fact, some of those associations, some of those microbes, have been associated with insects for hundreds of millions of years. So they are just com com completely integrated into in insect biology. Another example, symbionts might improve performance of agri agricultural pests. There are several examples that I, we know of. Uh, one of them is kudzu bug, which is originally from <coughs> Southeast Asia, but has been introduced to, to the US. Uh, it naturally feeds on white legumes, but at some point within the last 20 years, uh, it swapped the, gut, the specialized gut symbiont that it had, which made it able to feed on soybean. And so through this symbiont swap, the bug became an important soybean pest. A different example uh, is bean bug. Uh, so bean bugs acquire symbionts from soil each generation. So newly eclosed bean bugs just feed on soil and get some of the bacteria. It was demonstrated that bean bugs from insecticide treated sites do often acquire bacteria that can detoxify in the insecticides. So essentially they get bacteria which make them resistant to, to insecticide treatment. And again, affecting efficacy of uh, pest control. Another example. Honeybees are in very important pollinators globally, produce honey that is an important, important uh, commodity. But they are known for having complex gut microbiomes. So bees have a conserved microbiota, uh, like multiple different clades that are found more or less in every, every worker. We know that those microbes help, it, help the bees digest pollen and produce essential nutrients. So again, without those symbionts, the bee nutrition would be like really, really suffering. But microbiome also protects bees against pathogens, uh, against that cause several different diseases. One result that I found really fascinating was that genetic manipulation of gut symbionts, of certain gut symbionts, can even increase the protection further. So it is possible to make bees resistant to parasitic mites and some other, mite, other natural enemies through genetic manipulation. And here's another example. Uh, symbionts can prevent disease transmission in, in mosquitoes. So mosquitoes do transmit deadly human diseases uh, like dengue, zika, malaria. So those uh, pathogenic microbes are important on their own. But what I think is really exciting is that 
some symbiotic microbes can block mosquitoes' ability to transmit disease. Uh, so because uh, of the efficiency of Wolbachia protection against uh, viruses, that cause dengue or Zika, uh, it, it is now used on a large scale in like field in USA, Australia, Brazil, Southeast Asia, all around the world, uh, and thousands of lives are being saved. So with those examples, I hope I convinced you that microbiomes are really important in insect biology. But something that I want to highlight is that essentially all examples that I provided come from research uh, in, in Europe, in the US, uh, but we know virtually nothing about microbiomes in Malagasy's, uh, Madagascar's uh, unique insect fauna. So, so little information about what is going on here. So how can we study insect microbiota as a part of biodiversity surveys? We can extract all DNA from those community samples uh, and sequence it, get this mixed microbial community profile, maybe compare it against communities from other sites. But the analysis of such data are quite challenging because we don't know which microbe may come from each insect. So personally, I'm not a fan of, of this approach. But another approach is to separate the insects from such a community collection and extract the DNA using one of several available cheap methods from each of them individually. And then we can use the DNA for several different tests. So we can try to extract microbial signal from barcoding data. And this can be very, very cheap, quite easy, applicable on a very large scale, but unfortunately not all, not all microbes are captured that way. We can sequence microbial marker genes in a similar way as we have our sequencing insect marker genes in the whole bottles. So this is a much more comprehensive technique, somewhat more expensive and with lower throughput. And finally, we can try to sequence and compare microbial genomes, getting very, very detailed information about selected microbes. But this method is expensive and uh, it is really difficult. You need lots of training to be able to, to do this. But so altogether, across those three methods, we can go from methods that are very cheap and applicable on a very large scale to methods that are quite expensive and complicated, but can still be applied to selected most interesting organisms. So we can use microbial signal from barcoding data for large collections of insects, uh, sequence microbial genes for maybe selected uh, clades of interest or particularly interesting sites, and then, once we identify very interesting strains, we can sequence and compare, compare the genomes. And the cool thing is that we can use those different techniques just to inform the selection of samples at, at, at the next step. So, what are we doing now? Uh, we have been characterizing broadly uh, microbiomes of Swedish insects collected as a part of the IBA effort uh, at various sites in, in Sweden. Mm. I lead a separate project aiming to characterize the symbiosis of subfeeding hemipterans, including some from Madagascar. So that will provide information on, on some of those very specialized heritable microbes. But we do hope to expand uh, this substantially. Uh, so we want to, we do hope in the future to very broadly and comprehensively characterize Malagasy insect microbiomes. Uh, I'm very interested in the possibility of comparing microbes in Su Malag Malagasy insects versus those from other parts of the world. And since microbiomes can very strongly affect insect uh, biology, I hope that microbiome monitoring can become an integral part of future biodiversity monitoring efforts. With that, I want to thank uh, insect biomatlas crew and my lab crew, uh, some of the organization, and the organizations that allow us to obtain this Malagasy collection and hopefully enable very broad uh, microbiome characterization as we move further down. <laughs>